there when God poured out the Holy Ghost and fulfilled Joel chapter 2, verse 28, when God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Who's all flesh? That's you and I. That's every, that's every ethnic group. That's every color. That's male and female. That's young and old. It doesn't matter. Upon all flesh. God is pouring out his spirit today. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was a feast of 50 days that they celebrated called Pentecost. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So it shows here by this example that when they received the Holy Ghost in the Bible, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance or gave them the ability or prompted them. The Holy Ghost gave them the, the ability to speak in a language they didn't learn in school. It was a supernatural event. It was a supernatural experience that happens today. It happened to me when I was 17. Amen. Like I said, millions of people around the world speak with tongues. Millions of people around the world of many, many Christian religions speak with tongues because it is a gift and it is a promise in our New Testament for these last days. Jesus Christ is getting ready to return. He's getting ready to come back and he wants everybody in his church to have the Holy Spirit. He wants everybody that's a believer to have the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. See, this is the sign. This is the sign that they received the Holy Ghost. This is the evidence that they received it. Like I said, it was more than a good feeling, but they began speaking in a language, in their prayer, and in their worship. There was an utterance given that God gave them the ability, and God prompted them. And, and the Holy Spirit, when it moved upon them, gave them the ability and the prompting to be able to speak something they never learned before. Amen. But it was a real language. It was a real language that the people around could understand because there were people there from all over the world at that point because it was a feast, and they were coming there uh for the for the feast of uh pentecost and so there were jews all over the world that had come there that had come to celebrate that spoke in different language and, and they heard mary receive the holy ghost could you imagine mary the mother of jesus in the upper room she receives the holy ghost uh, speaking with tongues mary does mary and the 11 disciples they all received the holy ghost speaking with tongues in the upper room and there was 120 the bible says they all received the holy ghost uh, and began speaking with other tongues as the holy spirit gave them the utterance the holy ghost gave them the ability to do so and so can you imagine Mary, the mother of Jesus, that gave birth to the Messiah. She gave birth to the Holy One. And she received the Holy Ghost. Even Mary herself began speaking with tongues. Speaking with tongues. A powerful experience. That's beautiful. That's beautiful that even Mary received the Holy Ghost. A lot of people don't know that. But it's right here. It's right here. It's for everybody. I'll give you another passage here. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Acts 10, 44 through 46. Hallelujah. Receiving the Holy Ghost is very easy. It's very simple. It's just a simple prayer. It's a prayer we verbalize out loud to the Lord. It's not like a, a, a written prayer. It's not like a memorized prayer that someone could pray from a book. You know, there's some beautiful prayers that people have written in books or whatever. And then sometimes Christian people will read those prayers unto God. They'll pray those prayers unto God. The prayer that I'm talking about is not one of those. But it's a sincere prayer of the heart that says, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. A prayer that says, I want to receive the Holy Ghost. Well, we've got a little interference we can see. Okay. <laughs> so the, the prayer to receive the Holy Ghost is a prayer that says, Father, I want to receive your Spirit. I want to receive the Holy Ghost. It's a simple prayer like that. It takes a couple seconds. And then you begin to worship the Lord. You begin to praise the Lord. You begin to worship the Lord. Amen. And then as you're praising the Lord, you feel that invisible presence move upon you. I don't know if you felt it like I did a little while ago, but it moved upon me. And I could have easily spoke with tongues. I've spoken in tongues 
many, many, many times since I have received the Holy Ghost. Almost every single day I speak with tongues when I pray and as I worship. Why? Because it's a gift now that I can have a special communication with God. Did you know that people that have the Holy Ghost have a very special communication with God? The devil don't like it because the devil can't understand when we're speaking in tongues. The de- God blocks the devil's mind, and the devil cannot understand when we're speaking in tongues. It's a special prayer from us to God. It's a special prayer. It's a special praise from us to God that God gave us the ability to be able to do that. Why did he choose tongues? Why? Well, it says in the book of James that our tongue is, is the most unruly member of our body. <coughs> you know, it's been a long time since I hit somebody with my fist. Oh, it's been many, many years since I've done that. But you know, it's not been so many years that I've said something that I shouldn't have said to someone, that I offended someone. Why? Because my tongue, the Bible says, is the most unruly member of my body. And your tongue is the most unruly member of your body. So our tongue sometimes will act in ways and, and, and respond in ways that maybe we won't kick or punch you know, we won't react in those physical ways and violence, but our tongue will sometimes will say things we shouldn't say. Well, let me tell you, that's when James went on to teach in the book of James about the tongue, that it's an unruly evil, it's full of deadly poison, it's a fire, it's a fire, he said, that it sets on course the whole nature. It's just an unruly evil, the tongue is. But God chose tongues, the speaking in tongues. God chose the speaking in tongues so that the, te- the, so that the tongue can be tamed. Because James also said no man can tame the tongue. You can put bits in the horse's mouth and you can tame the horse. You can put a, r- a little rudder on a ship, a big huge ship, and you can tell it where to go. But you can't tame the tongue. But God can. And he does it when you receive the Holy Ghost. Of course, sometimes we don't always still respond like we need to because we're imperfect beings and God is working on us. Thank God for that. Don't you thank God that he's still working on us? Let me go on here to read Acts 10 and 44. Hallelujah. While Peter yet, there he is again, this main spokesman speaking again. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Did you know this is about 10 years after they had initially received the Holy Ghost, where I read a little while ago in Acts chapter 2? This is about 10 years after that. 10 years later, people are still receiving the Holy Ghost. And it's been 2,000 years, and people are still receiving the Holy Ghost, evidenced with the sign of speaking in tongues. So while Peter was preaching, The Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, or they of the Jews, the Jewish people, which believed, were astonished as many as came with Peter, because then on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Though the Gentiles are receiving the Holy Ghost. See, God first chose the Jews. The Jews received the Holy Ghost. They spoke with tongues. Now the Gentiles, well, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. I'm a Gentile. Upon the Gentiles was also poured out the what? The gift. Somebody say the gift. The gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues. How did they know it? For they heard them speak with tongues. How did they know they received the Holy Ghost? Because then on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. How did they know they received the Holy Ghost? Because then on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Tongues is the sign of receiving the Holy Ghost. Tongues is the evidence that the Holy Ghost came in. It's the sign. It's a beautiful and powerful experience. Oh, wow. I'm glad that one day I received the Holy Ghost. You know, the New Testament, we call it the Holy Ghost. You know why it's called the Holy Ghost so much more in the, in the New Testament than the Old Testament? You know why it's called the Holy Ghost? Because when Jesus died, the Bible says that he gave up the ghost. Did anybody ever read that in Matthew chapter 28? Jesus died, and Jesus died, he gave up the ghost, it says. Well, if you look up the word of the definition of the word ghost, that means the spirit of a departed person. The spirit of a departed person. When Jesus died, his spirit left him. He gave up 
the ghost. So the, we call it the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of Jesus. It's the spirit of the departed. Jesus died. Of course, he rose again. But his spirit left him. He gave up the ghost. So when we receive his spirit, it's called the Holy Ghost because it is the spirit of Jesus. He that is with you, remember we read the verse, shall be in you. Talking about himself. So the Holy Ghost is the spirit of Jesus we receive with the sign of speaking with tongues. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm determined to believe the Bible. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm not going to choose my own opinions because the Bible teaches us plainly that we need to believe his word. And God's going to judge us according to his word. He's going to judge us not according to our opinion. God don't care about our opinions. He wants to know, are we following his word? Are we doing what his Bible says? And it's his word. It's his promise. It's his, it's his covenant with us. 